Philips <clears throat> Extreme Vision LED, just in case you thought that Extreme Vision meant headlight bulbs only. No, 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 they do a whole range of Extreme Vision stuff. It's their high end premium um, light bulb products. So, this is a uh, red, obviously, LED that's uh, intended to replace 1157 or uh, P25 slash 5 filament bulbs, which is this thing here. And the, uh, the way these work, they have two contacts at the bottom and two filaments inside. Uh, that's what the uh, 21 slash 5 refers to. Uh, normally it would be to, uh, P21 slash 5W. W is for watts. So one filament is 21 watts and the other is 5 watts. And they're typically used in uh, things like uh, tail light um, enclosures where you have the low power filament taking care of the tail light functionality and the high power filament taking care of the brake light functionality. And that's just switched on and off or switched between the two modes using the, uh, using the dual contacts. So uh, 21 watts, both, both filaments are on, by the way, when the high power mode is on, which makes a total power of, uh, maximum power of 26 watts. Um, so this is an LED which is intended to replace that. Um, I have tried a number of uh, LEDs to do this in the past, uh, the cheaper Chinese ones that are, you can get off eBay and um, AliExpress and that kind of thing. Uh, they're all junk in my experience. I haven't found one that's any good yet. So now I'm going to try the uh, name brand, so to speak. Well, uh, since Philips do this, I like the look of the design. I thought I'd give it a go. It's very expensive, a lot more expensive than the Chinese ones. But you uh, presumably get what you pay for. So what do they advertise? Uh, five times more light, whatever that means. Obviously red. 12-year uh, lifetime. Um, on the website they guarantee that, so I guess it's a kind of warranty. Um, although, you know, in, in 11 years and uh, 6 months from now, then um, good luck. But anyway, they're, they're clearly optimistic about the uh, durability, so that's good to see. Uh, they say road legal, um, up to 60 degrees operating temperature, vibration resistant, which is true of LEDs in general, so that's good. 130 lumens. Now that's a very difficult um, measure to compare because these are red and if you're comparing it to the lumen output of these, which is almost certainly higher, uh, you need to remember that these will be behind a red filter in use, which will cut their effective lumens. So not necessarily a comparable figure that. Let's open the box up and have a look at the actual, um, the actual chips. So, if we compare this side to side, we see that you can see how Philips are clearly going for the same sort of form factor. Uh, there's this, I'm not sure what it is, if it's um, metal coated and something, or whether it's a, a ceramic, um, or just a plastic, presumably a heat, heat sink of some sort, because the fins are presumably designed to provide cooling. Um, anyway, and there are the chips, there's one chip, two chips, one on each side which are situated, as you can see, uh, in exactly the same location as the center of the filament in the original. So it's clearly designed to work with the enclosures, the uh, reflectors and the refractors um, of an existing light enclosure designed for this. And the uh, these are mounted one on each side, but this is sort of a wedge orientation you look like that you can see so the light is clearly intended to go here and here but at the hemisphere where the hemispheres intersect here hopefully there should be a bit of overlap so you don't get any lack of light around here despite these uh, chips being oriented opposite each other so I will now bring the uh, power supply do a little bit of measuring. I have a 12 volt power supply connected to this uh, DMM. And I will switch between 
I'm not sure which is high and which is low, but we're about to find out. Now, if it doesn't work, probably I have the polarity wrong. And with LEDs, that matters. And these bulbs, because of the dual contacts, can be expect to be inserted in the correct way around. So they don't need to worry about um, any circuitry that could handle that. Now it's going to work. Ta-da! That's one setting, and the, the, that's dimmer. So that's the low light, and that is the the um, high level. And so the car, when you're switching from tail light to brake light, <clears throat> will be making that switch as you do it. Now, what I wanted to measure on the voltmeter is the power draw, and that's worth talking about. Now, Phillips claims the low level power draw is 0 0.3 watts and the high level power draw is 2 watts, which is interesting. Certainly a lot less than these, so you're talking about some power savings. Um, but what I really care about is actually the ratio between the high and the low level, because on the cheaper Chinese ones that I've tried of these, the main problem with their performance wasn't that they weren't bright enough, but rather that they, uh, the difference between the low level and high level was insufficient. For example, the ratio on uh, the one that I was using most recently was about 3 or 3.2 to 1. Um, that's to say the high level was only about three times brighter than the low level. Um, whereas the uh, ratio on these is closer to 5. Obviously it's uh, 5 watts as opposed to 26 watts, right? So that's about 1 to 5. So let's measure now, despite what Phillips might claim, let's measure the low level. Now that is drawing 0 0.02 amps at 12.05 uh, volts. So that's drawing 0 0.24 watts, which is quite close to what Phillips claim at 0 0.3 watts. And the high power is drawing 0 0.16 amps, which is 1.92, 1.93, uh, which again is, is quite close to the 2 watts claimed. So <clears throat> to calculate the ratio, we divide those two numbers as 1.928. Divided by 0 0.241, which is a ratio of exactly 8, <clears throat> which is a suspiciously round figure, so there must be something in the circuitry that's uh, relevant to that, I would guess. And that's, that's incredible. That's uh, really good, considering that the filament bulb is 5, where it was significantly above that. So hopefully the uh, low-level light will be a you know sensible tail light sort of level of luminosity and then the uh, brake light when it kicks in will be eight times that in terms of its power use um, which means it's really going to uh, really going to get people's attention okay one remaining thing to do we will uh, have a look at what the pattern of the light looks like if I hold that vertically and then we introduce the testing bowl I have here then we can see uh, how the light is being distributed by the light by the bowl um, and as you can see um, with the exception of a very subtle shadow um, at the uh, lower edges um, it really gives a very um, a very good even distribution of light. Um, not really any hot spots of any note. 
Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty good. It's going to emulate a filament bowl fairly well. So I'll uh, go put this bulb in a car in order to demonstrate it working. Uh, it just goes in the same way as the old filament style bulb, obviously with a uh, twist and spring action. Um, so here's the low and high modes in response to the brake pedal, all working as you would expect. And uh, here it is behind the lens, uh, looking at just the outer right hand segment here, as there are other, other two other bulbs uh, completing the ring that are uh, irrelevant for this particular review. And here's a, a shot directly from the back of the car with the tail lights on and the brake being actioned. And again, ignore the inner segments of the tail lights. So the Philips LED is on the right and the uh, filament, the old filament bulb is on the left. So notice how the Philips is noticeably brighter in both low and high modes. And uh, here is a still photograph. This is showing just the uh, tail lights on, so just the low mode for the um, brake lights. And here is a shot showing just the brake lights on uh, with the tail lights off. So you can see uh, the direct comparison between the new and the old. And here's the bulb gain just uh, with the camera moving through varying angles um, from, you know, looking at the refractor lens. And uh, I'd say those shadows that were visible on the bowl are uh, actually noticeable here as there's a dark spot at the uh, meeting of the hemispheres of the two chips. So it's not 100% reproducing the light pattern from a filament bulb, but it is very close and I'm uh, not going to deduct too many points, so to speak, for this. I think it's perfectly acceptable. So this is a positive review, very little to criticize. And uh, we can say it certainly does its job of replacing the filament version. And in return for the admittedly high price, you get a very long lifetime, or at least a very long guaranteed lifetime, and a very good performance in terms of both light and super low power usage. So I'll uh, put the links to purchase this uh, below for anybody who's interested. Otherwise, uh, everybody have fun out there.